Hello everyone and welcome back to the Blue Bunny Hunter channel and many if not all of you are probably familiar with the cybernetic four armed general that served under Count Dooku during the Clone Wars but in this video I go over the backstory of General Grievous explaining everything from his original species to how he became the metal monster he would later become and starting off with his early life Grievous, who was originally known as Kwaiman Jai Shilol, was born on the planet of Kali during a rough time for his people, and the advanced insectoid species from the planet Huck, known as the Yamri, were conquering and enslaving other planets in the system, and when they got to Kali, a huge war started between the Yamri and the Kalish, and the Kalish actually called them the Huck or soulless bugs, and due to rough times, Shalil's father taught him how to use a blaster rifle by the age of 8, and he had already killed 40 different Huck by the age of 8, and as he got older, his Huck kills got so high that he was thought of as a demigod by his people. Now, I couldn't actually find out when Shalil was born. Uh, some sources say 100 BBY, and one website actually said 22 BBY. But I don't trust that one because, crazy enough, I don't think Grievous was three years old when he died. Later on, Shalil became partners with a Kalish mercenary known as Ronderu Ij Kumar who he met when he had a dream in which he killed a wild Moo Moo with leg swords. And he was taken so back by this dream and it was so vivid that he decided to go hunt a Moo Moo in the Kunbal jungle where he actually ended up finding Kumar who had just killed the beast and he then realized that the dream was about her and not the hunt itself. And Shalil and Kumar would go on to fight side by side against the Huck, wielding their rifle and leg swords respectfully. But in one fight against the Huck, Kumar perished and her body disappeared into the Genuva Sea. After this, Kwaiman Jai Shilol went into a deep depression and actually traveled to Abesmi where he asked the gods to retrieve Kumar's body from the sea. And Abesmi was basically just this island way off the coast of the mainland where he lived. But the gods remained silent and Shilol kind of accepted the truth that he would not be getting his partner back. So moving into the Huck War, which was the Kalish versus the Huck. And uh, at the beginning of this, Shalil realized that he was meant to grieve Kumar for the rest of his life, and he then changed his name to Grievous. He then became a warlord, and alongside the Kalish elite guards known as the Ivashora, he used his newfound anger to drive the Huck off Kalish, but he didn't stop with Kalish. Shalil actually continued to fight the Huck across the many planets in the sector. And with this, he kind of built this uh, new reputation that really just spread across the galaxy that Grievous was this really powerful and fierce warlord of uh, Kali. But later into the war, the Huck asked the Republic for help, and the newfound Jedi forces destroyed the Kalish barrage, pushing them back to their homeworld and causing hundreds of thousands of Kalish to starve. So basically the Republic was like forcing them back to their homeworld and they just did not have good living conditions anymore. So a lot of them ended up dying here. And this really fueled a long lasting rage for the Jedi that would make Grievous a powerful warrior in the future. But after this, Grievous began a deal with the intergalactic banking clan under Sam Hill to introduce funds to the Kalish to solve their poverty situation. And in return, Grievous pledged his allegiances to the spreading separatist movement. Uh, and missing his old Ivashura guards, 
Grievous demanded better droids for him than the B1s that he was stuck with. And with this, Dooku created the Magna Guards for Grievous, which were highly trained in combat and also more durable than previous droid units. So it is noted many times, and you can actually see this in the Clone Wars, that Grievous really just despised the uh, battle droids that he was stuck working with. And over time, Grievous slowly began his cyborg transformation by getting machine implants here and there to aid him in his fight against the Jedi. So at first, he was kind of willingly becoming a cyborg, but as you're about to see, uh, the final step in his transformation was definitely against his will. And finally, for this video, I'm going to talk about the accident that turned Grievous into a cyborg permanently. And basically, Dooku came up with a plot with Sam Hill and Poggle the Lesser to assassinate Grievous, in which they would sabotage his ship and make him crash. And so they actually acted on this plan, and following the devastating crash, Grievous nearly died, and his body was destroyed. And Dooku actually deceived him and told him that the Jedi did it, and that he could finish his cyborg transformation with the help of an FX6 surgical droid. Grievous was transformed into a monster of power and hatred. Following the surgery, all that remained of his old body was his eyes, brain, and some internal organs. The transformation also gave him plated armor, increased height, and they used his Kalish war mask for the helmet. It also altered his brain, making him faster and deadlier in combat, and he got sensors throughout his body that allowed him to feel through his metal frame. Uh, and this is actually kind of like gross to me, I feel like, because that means all those times in the Clone Wars where they like cut off Grievous's legs and you know, Obi-Wan cutting off his hands in Revenge of the Sith, that means that he could feel all that stuff. So really just gives you a new perspective into his character. But the last thing that it changed was his robotic arms that could actually split into four at his will. And when he woke up from his surgery, Grievous slaughtered all of the droids present as he was disgusted with his new body. And Darth Tyrannus, or Count Duke, offered him a lightsaber and began trading with him so that he could become a bigger threat against the Jedi. And it's noted that Darth Tyrannus as well as Darth Sidious were actually hoping that Grievous might be force sensitive and they even augmented his brain so that he could maybe become force sensitive. But to their dismay, Grievous could never prove to be any kind of Sith or Sith of Apprentice, so he really was just a pawn that they used for uh, kind of being a tactician and fighting against the Jedi by himself. At the Battle of Geonosis, Grievous was positioned at the Stalgassan Hive's catacombs where a few Jedi happened to wander into them and he dueled with them, preventing the Jedi from capturing the Separatist Council within the Hive and he actually killed all of the Force Sensitives that went into the catacombs, delaying the knowledge of his existence for even longer. And going into the Clone Wars, Grievous became the leader of the droid army and led them into many battles, becoming a feared general as well as a great warrior all around. And I'm not gonna talk about what he did in the Clone Wars too much because I'm sure you guys are already pretty well familiar with that, uh, as you see in the Clone Wars TV show, and obviously I'm not going to go over his death or anything because that was in Revenge of the Sith, 
but I did want to talk about his origins here today on this video. I do think it is interesting when you take a character like this that you really just don't know anything about, but you can really look into legends and some of those comics and like the deep canon and lore and stuff and just find all this cool stuff about him. And he really did have a tragic life when you really think about it because you know his partner died and then his people were starving forever and then he ended up you know kind of getting assassinated by Dooku in order to make him even more powerful than he was so all his life he was basically just used as a killing machine and he really didn't get much say in a lot of things so I almost feel bad for him in a lot of ways but he is a very interesting and cool character and I thought diving into his origins today would be a uh, pretty cool thing to do but anyway that's it for this video you can subscribe if you want to i upload every sunday at five o'clock p.m eastern standard time but uh yeah see ya